Hello everyone and welcome to your second royal reading of today, a Thursday here at Mad World Tarot. And I have the Rebel Heart Tarot on the tarot table today. It's a bit of a Barbie pink colour, the Rebel Heart Tarot. And that's because we're having an International Women's Day event tomorrow, courtesy of Archiewell. They are sponsoring the Day One Keynote panel at South by Southwest, the big film and music festival. And they're sponsoring this event uh, where Megan is listed as a visionary female leader who's going to be on this panel with uh, Brooke Shields and Katie Couric and a couple of other women as well. And they're going to be addressing the topic, breaking barriers, shaping narrative, how women lead on and off the screen. I wonder who wrote that. Um, so we're going to have a little look with the Rebel Heart Tarot just for fun because our theme of the day is Megan as a visionary, as a thought leader, as an intellectual giant and uh, self-proclaimed uh, in this visionary female leader that she is um, apparently going to be presenting as tomorrow at this um, keynote event. So a little five card reading, we're going to see why she's doing this. She seems to be repositioning herself or trying to as an intellectual, as a feminist. Um, although she might have burned her bridges with glow after that near catastrophic car chase in New York, the day she was receiving an award from glow. I just have to pause. I had to fetch those cards back. Uh, but she, she is repositioning herself. So we're going to ask why she's doing this. How much did it cost Archie well to buy this for her? Because clearly it is sponsored by them. This is not a freebie. She's not being paid to show up and speak. She had to buy her way into this uh, through Archie well. How are the other women going to feel about her? Or do they feel about her now? Uh, no shrinking violet. Katie Couric certainly not. I think could eat Meghan Markle alive. Brooke Shields also. Uh, certainly uh, capable of standing up for herself. So how are they going to feel about Meghan? And how is Meghan going to come across ultimately um, at this event? How are people going to perceive her? Is she going to cover herself in glory? Or is it going to be a bit of a cringe fest? We never know. And we are fascinated as she puts herself out there, volunteers for these things. She could have been cutting ribbons, opening a new lighthouse, launching a new boat. Um, any of that kind of stuff, but no. Uh, wants to be at this keynote event, uh, speeching away. So let's see how it's gonna go. Ooh, we have the Empress in reverse as uh, our underlying energy. The Empress is um, the divine feminine. It's archetypal female energy. You can see she's clutching her bump there, interestingly. Um, hmm. Uh, don't get our hopes up now. Let's not get our hopes up. The Empress is about creativity, is about abundance, is about uh, pure female energy and what female energy represents if you're allowed to still discuss the world in those terms. Creativity, fertility, abundance, value, self-worth, those kinds of things, beauty, elegance, um, desirability. It's in the reverse. Hmm. So we're talking International Women's Day and the archetypal women's card has come out in reverse as the underlying energy of this reading. You can't make these kinds of things up. And that uh, universe is making a very loud point here that this is a farce. And uh, she is not representative of uh, all things um, archetypally female at all. Just making that point very clearly, very loudly. She's an imposter even 
you could say. And I'm uh, not sure if I reminded you that this is just tarot for fun and entertainment. And it is just my opinion and speculation. And it is just archetypal energy we read here. And there is, of course, a disclaimer in the box below. But I think it's time that I reminded you of all of those things now. While we look at this woman clutching her bump. So let's move on to the actual situation. What do we have? We have the King of Pentacles. This is the boss energy in the tarot. This is the, the business brain. This is somebody with the money, with the contacts, with the big empire, the business empire. And uh, it's shown up that would be Archiewell, who has come to the party with sackloads of cash to fund this event i'm speculating of course but that is the boss energy this is i know what i have this organization i can fund this thing i can get uh, um prime position on this panel and a headline speaker kind of a thing and uh, there it is empress in reverse underlying energy this is the actual situation that we're dealing with we're dealing with money and contacts and boss energy here i am um, I'm, I'm a big player in this thing now. I'm important, I'm serious, I'm substantial in my um, influence. So why is she doing this? Why is she showing up? Eight of Swords. Because she's got herself into a pickle. The Eight of Swords is somebody who has uh, got themselves into a bit of difficulty, a trap of their own making or their own imagining because it's swords, it's thoughts, it's mental energy. She's got herself into a bit of a mess and she doesn't know how to get out of it because of course everything else that she has tried has flopped. Her flop cast has flopped. Her attempts with Netflix to make uh, movies, series, documentaries, or whatever, flopped. Her um, attempt at being an influencer flopped. Nothing with the Kardashians, nothing on Instagram. The TIG hasn't been resurrected. She has promised us she's going to be the next Martha Stewart. Can't wait personally. That I would watch. Uh, but so far, all a big disaster. And oh yes, let's not forget, no longer welcome as a royal in Britain. So there it is. She's got herself into a pickle, doesn't know how to get out. Oh, let's buy ourselves keynote um, event at uh, this festival. How much is it costing? We've already got the King of Pentacles on the table. Is it big bucks or not really? Not with the Page of Swords. It's costing influence. It was pulling strings. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. So I don't think shed loads of money changed hands. So I'll take that back. Um, it is more about um, contacts. Somebody with a contacts book, probably um, the crew at um, William Morris Endeavour uh, put this together. They do seem to be implicated in these events at this festival. Uh, it's probably their client list okay yes those ones are free they're not invited to the pre-oscar party either so let's put them on a panel let's give them some a bit of a profile boost and uh it helps megan markle out helps them out this is networking page of swords very much so so no i don't think big bucks i don't think archie well has big bucks likes to look as if it does but reality is this was somebody with influence and contacts page of sorts. How do the other women feel about this, feel about Megan? What is going on really behind the scenes with them? Four of swords. <laughs> That's an interesting card because it's the card of being out of sight, the four of swords. Normally it's take yourself away, get out of the public eye for a while, do what Catherine is doing. Heal out of sight. Uh, unfortunately for her, it's not out of mind. But retreat. Uh, recover. They're looking at Megan as someone who's damaged goods. It's the Four of Swords. Somebody who should really be retreating for quite a good length of time. And coming back when people have forgotten, when some time has passed 
when she can come back uh, reimagined, uh, remade. And uh, we're, we're always hearing the story. So and so hasn't been in a film for 20 years. Where have you been all this time? Oh, on my own healing journey. Now I've won an Oscar. Now I'm going to cry in front of everyone. That they're looking at Megan and thinking, you really need to go away. I'm sure their palms are being greased to appear here and as I say it's raising their profiles and uh, it's not great, great competition it's pretty easy to out um, debate Meghan Markle I should imagine so uh, easy enough for them to outshine her as long as their clothes aren't crumpled as long as they're wearing the right kind of undergarments to um, uh, use a word that Beeb Kelly likes to talk about her undergarments are very often inappropriate for the clothes that she is wearing or even the clothes themselves are inappropriate for the occasion if they can get that part right, they're pretty much already trumped her, let's say. Being snarky, of course. Um, how's it going to go for Megan? Is she going to outshine everyone and it's a big surprise? Oh no, Ace of Wands in reverse. <gasps> oh dear, that's a communication card, the Ace of Wands. When it's upright, it's a forceful, direct um, to, uh, uh, directed communications, it flows, it's fluent, it's impactful, it's resonant, it's impressive, it uh, makes people sit up and think the Eight of Wands, but it's in reverse word salad, or even no chance to speak. She might actually be cowed on the stage by these other women who have much more experience at being women on screen and off than this person who comes across for me energetically as an imposter has. And so it looks as if she's going to be blocked. Um, she might uh, not have coherent thoughts that she can articulate, eight of wands in reverse. She might not even be reported on. That's also eight of wands in reverse. It might be that the others are so impressive or look so beautiful or have such amazing things to say or experiences to share that Megan's little portion of this event is going to go past unnoticed, oh dear, and uh, not even recorded or reported on as I say. So it doesn't bode well. We have two eights sitting uh, on top of each other in this reading. Interesting when things like that happen. Eights are movement, progress, action. Uh, in the tarot, eight of swords, we have somebody who can't move, who is stuck, who is afraid. And eight of wands in reverse, somebody whose communication is blocked who doesn't have much to say, who isn't heard, who is overruled, talked over, who might just talk garbage, who might not be reported on. So whatever progress she was hoping for and her people uh, thought that they could uh, stitch up for her, no. Nope. And a lot of, just as a, as a final thought, a lot of people suspect that this event tomorrow is to do with her trying to get speakers for her podcast that she's doing for Lemonada, which I've just read on uh, previously. And I, that's why I've put these two readings together today because they do have some kind of connection. Possibly this contacts list, this little black book that somebody has and has opened and has set this whole thing up. It's not going to end in the deals, in the networking, the connections, the chat. Eight of Wands that Megan was hoping it would lead to. So, hmm, there it is. That's the reading. Thank you for watching, and I may see you tomorrow. I may not. Uh, family event tomorrow. So, depends how it goes, when it ends. Uh, if I don't pop on, I will catch up with you again over the weekend.